Hello, and welcome to episode 17 of the Into Green podcast. I'm your host today. You can find me at Into Green on Ravelry. And it's been about three and a half weeks since I last recorded. So a lot to talk about. I might have to go back to the recording because, you know, I'm really starting to get back into living and sitting, and I don't think I can fit everything in. Um, but let's start with what I am knitting right now. So right now I am knitting a sweater for the sweater trail that we're having in the Green Ravelry group and for the podcast. I do have a few giveaways available for that, which one is more pink of a worsted weight by the Dyer Viola. I'm not dying anymore. Um, and then nice dark purple red. The color weight called Lake. That works out to about 800 yards. So that's up for grabs at fun times and then a ten dollar um pattern on Ravelry for a second prize. So um, there are some people participating and thank you so much for joining along with me. I know a lot of us are racing to the finish. We have one more month left. I will close that uh, contest for sale on August thirty first, October. Excuse me. I already think that it's August only. October thirty first at midnight. Green tea with a biscuit. Mm. So, we have a month left, and so I'm hoping a few people will jump in and get it done um, and spread the word. I'm more the merrier. Um, and hopefully, we have some entries, and right now it looks like our participation is around you know, 20 people or less, so you could have a really good chance to win some really good prizes. So for this tale, I'm knitting the Leaving Sweater by Ann Hansen. It was in Swiss Collective in 2010, and I'm knitting it out of Madeline Top Sports. If you remember from the last time we talked, I had completed a sleeve. And I was starting to guess on the second sleeve, and this is the second sleeve. And uh, the sun, and now I really feel like I can power head um, on the sweater. I do like sleeves knit in the flat better than knit in the round. Um, but for still some reason, I, I just don't want to it. No good. Um, the one excuse I do have, though, is that I have been knitting uh, with a lighter stain and still somewhat saturated of the brown rich color that I really like. It's given a little bit of color light, which is what this is. Um, but it's just a little lighter. And so I've been knitting it on my sleeve, so my body is mainly from those richer stains that I have. Because I had this light stain, I have four matching sleeves, and then one dollar Um, And so I changed um, yarn right about here. And I don't know if you can really tell um, on camera, I guess. Um, but when I was knitting up and I was changing my yarn, there is a slight contrast now. But I was totally like the knitter that was lying to it. For real. I have like, added a new stain and it was nit, 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 and there was stuff aligned to the naked eye. It was so light. Might as well have been white and black because there was like it looked awful. So I had knit a few inches up and so I had ripped back and then come upstairs and lay out all my stains and try to find one that matched and, and that felt me out for a few days. But I got a stain that is not a bad of a match, and it will be not noticeable to the naked eye once the sweater is assembled and I'm wearing it. There's no way you'll be able to tell. So I'm very happy second sleeve. So I, right after I got that off the needles, I did move on to the body. I don't have a lot of time, yo. I at least want to finish the sweater in our tail time. And I started with the back. So since this is knit in pieces and I'm doing a cardigan, I have both sleeves, which are done, and I'm going to have two fronts in the back. Then I'll have to seam it. I'll have to pick up the button bands and pick up the collar. Cool. I better be shaking it because I'm going to it's going to take me a lot of knitting. So this is the back, and I'm doing pretty well. Um, there's a few modifications that I made. Sorry, I hope it is. Um, the first is that I am a different size on the bottom down there than I am up here. And so I passed on a bigger size and then I modified the decreases at a quicker rate to basically match my body shape. 
And so then when the cardigan is on me, in the naked eye, you won't be able to tell as noticeably, but it, it will lay right where the button band will go down my center of my body. If I don't do that, what happens is I sit like on the side. This fabric will be pulled, you know, to accommodate that that beautiful extra, you know, I had a kid sat in it, that's down there. And when you are doing a cardigan, and I am here, I'm, you know, more heavy in my upper torso, maybe my shoulders, maybe my bust, um, maybe where I am, which is around my waist is bigger. If you don't accommodate that by allowing either some kind of dark or some kind of increases for that extra wonderfulness that you have, in a cardigan, I found my button band won't lay straight. I won't be up and down anymore. Because you would have to stretch, my my sweater would have to stretch out this way to be able to accommodate that. You're going to stretch out your button band. And so what I want to do, even if I don't button it, when I have it on, I want there to be two linear lines down the center of my body. And that will give someone to have a perspective if they're looking right on in front of me, you know, on front or to one of the signs, that linear line will automatically pull your eye that I'm more slender than I am. Basically an optical illusion of clothing. So to be able to do that, one of the reasons that I meant to accommodate my own body shape is to be able to make it look more pleasing. Um, I passed on a bigger size on the bottom, and then I modified the decreases, which are at this, one of them is at this marker over here, out of quicker space. So mine is going to go quite quickly. It's going to decrease, and then it will be straight, and then it will flare slightly from my eye. The center panel is really nice. It'll be a nice piece on the back of my sweater. I'm happy about it. The only, not really complaint, it's just like now a space that I never knew before I used the sweater, is that this is lace on both sides. So this is true lace, um, where you have patterning on both sides for this panel section. The same for on the arms. And so it does take longer because you don't have any of those pro back rough shows. There's no non paint when you get to this for the panel. Every single time, I need to look at the first. But it's going really good. It's knit out of three different size needles. If you cast it on, you know there's that nice roll. It's supposed to be there to have hide your cap on a little bit. That's on three. My twisted rib is on five. The body of the sweater is on four. And then I did a gauge of the pattern. So that's um, really great. I'm very excited about it. I'm alternating skeins right now on the body. It's coming out good. I don't think the naked eye. You can slightly tell in certain areas. For a non-knitter yellow, though, those muscles will never tell. So um, I'm happy with the alternating and taking some of the other things that aren't quite matching and then incorporating them as well. And so I am working along on that, and I am kind of focusing really on that. I am knitting the Sandman shawl by um, Sundgren Johnson, and I've only met a little bit on this. So this is out of Becoming Art, uh, her Marina Cashmere Silk Fingering Weight Base in the December colorway. Last time I had the Central, central Pencil done, and I'm now working on the very extensive edges. I do really like it in person, um, and I'm happy with it. I got one more repeat of that completely done. And the stitches are getting pretty intense. So here is my complaint. I have been knitting this border, and like, a knitter who thinks she's smarter than she is, I looked at the chart, but looking at the chart does 
not mean that I always get this part. So, getting along, getting along, getting along. I blatantly assume that at the center here, this is the center I have a this marker, that this side of the shawl and this side of the shawl were completely mirrored. Because that's what I prefer when I'm knitting shawls is to have a completely mirrored pattern. In this case, the mirroring would be slight. Just really slight. I would say like two or three stitches different. And so I just forged ahead. Why well, just exasperated the problem that's happening? And I keep on getting to this point. Dang it, it's just not working. And I keep on fudging it, keep on fudging it to make it be a mirror of the other side. And oh wait, it's not a mirror because it's not supposed to stay on. So I have some fudging to work out. So what happened last time is I started on the next week of the this nice lady section. And I got all the way to the middle, which is like at this point, 200 some stitches in, and I realized my mistake, and I ripped it back all the way out, and it kind of back to the which is not super But it's going to take a back burner anyways, because I want to knit that sweater, and then I have knitting for gift giving coming up. Christmas is around the corner. I know some of you are going to hurt me for saying that, but if you're doing Christmas knitting, you know, it's really kind of starting. And sweet for me. And I have lots of people who have birthdays this time of year. And my husband really has taken an interest in knitting. He's promised um, two baby knits, a few cats, and a few sweaters. Adult sweaters. We need to knit faster. We need to not work, and then I can knit all day. So, that's going to take a bad seat. So, let's talk about finished objects. And then we'll talk about this. So I haven't had the ends woven in, but I knit this slipper pattern. This slipper pattern, goodness gracious, I forgot the name of it, but it is by Megan Williams of the Confident Zombie. And uh, this is a 1313 unravelry of the Girl K Pen. Um, the Confident Zombie, so you talk about this pattern, it's a lovely story. Um, this, uh, 1313. This is a pattern that's been passed down in her family, and um, Megan took the pattern with her help, and she made it sweet ones. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So I know these don't really look like slippers, but they are. And um, this is in the back side, this is front side. Yeah, it looks more like a slipper. So. Um, so I'm knitting these for a birthday present, and their cream is probably not the best for her. Much easier. But also, they're 100% cashmere. And what I did is I have two strands or that uh, they can bring together to get a true work to the weight of this cashmere. I have washed them, and I don't know if you can really tell, but there is a fantastic cable going on. And they're still a little damp because the white ends are open in. But oh, it's not our people. They are so dang soft. I kind of want to keep them, but I don't want to. But they're all. So, so you guys don't think I'm totally crazy and extra extravagant. I got this 100% cashmere two balls in a grab bag. Woo! It took years ago. Someone was doing, oh, I'm, I'm closing and I'm just doing grab bag and dollars or whatever. And so I got a few grab bags. And this is what was in one of them. And so it's, they're so awesome. And I have been struggling for years to decide what to do with this 100% cashmere. And I think this is perfect um, for the intimate recipients. And I'm calling them bed slippers because they have it. If someone walks around the house and these all the time, they're going to get holes in them. And then here's some of my cat. Walk around going to the bathroom, seriously. Don't stick in jumper pants or anything. I'm just going to embed and just walk this box 
I dot button. So I found this seller on Etsy. Um, and if I can find it, I'll put it below in a, in a drop down. But it was actually not a button seller. What it is, is um, an embellishment. So it's like for belts or when you're doing purses or something like that, you can get embellishments to hammer into those or spread them out. And so what I cut is something new that I'm trying out. Um, the button band on my sweater for sweater style that weaving is a twisted rib. And a twisted rib, as I'll show you, I'm trying to get the parts to fall out. I'm very scared, sorry. Looks like this. So if this is my this is gonna be my button band if I was up and down. Um, and this is what the twisted rib looks like. Well it's kind of not it has more spaces in the front section. My twisted rib isn't as tight as my normal one. So I did get the size buttons called for and they are tiny. Kind of How small that is, and it's just like a brass. This is what it looks like. You see, there's like that space. So, what I'm thinking is that I'm actually not going to do any button holding at any time because that very snugly fits. This is my section piece, and that's just a good section. And this looks really small, but I got I just want to see 10 buttons. And this is the size called for the pattern. So I can sew them on. But they have instead is they have that little opening. And then we have this here. So I'm going to screw them um, in. And we'll see. I'll wear it for a week or two, and if it's not great, then I'll find another solution. But I thought it was an interesting, um, it was an interesting idea. That just the screw screwed it in a little bit just to see. Screw that in, and I should be able to screw tight to my fabric, and then I'll just be able to uh, pull it through, and I'll have two tiny little buttons. I mean, that's perfect for my fabric. I want them to be somewhat invisible. So, and the Etsy tailor I got, we got a, uh, I don't know, foreign country for sure. Tokyo, I think. Can. And it took, um, although I am on the West Coast, so I'm here again, um, but it only took like, I think, four days for these days. It was really fast shipping. It was really nice. So I got those two things. Um, it was also many sweet that I didn't think I'd better try out the new idea because buttons, getting them sewed on, is not the best sewer in the whole world, and I'll totally admit it. My hand sewing is getting better. But the other thing is, buttons are dang expensive. Even the cheaper buttons are expensive. I mean, this sweater calls for 10 buttons. And I'm like, that is going to be, even if I go to Joanne's, you know, 15 bucks, these buttons were half that, and they were shipped from in Tokyo. So, what is right? Hey, then I got a phone call from one of my sisters. Everyone loves this. And I had an order. She would like a cowl, yo. And um, she wants it super bright. So I don't really get that request very often. Most people will request some kind of knitted item from me. They're like, I want gray. Seriously, yo, that's boring. No knitter wants to like knit in black and gray all the time. And that is the only thing I swear people request. So I was like, oh, dang, I'll go. So I went to one of my local yarn shops, about 45 minutes away from me, called Stash. And this yarn store is all about um, local sourcing of yarn. They do have some fiber as well, but it's local to the Pacific Northwest and the Canada. And so I got a new green brand, and as bright as I can find. There's not even saturating. It looks red, but that's fuchsia people. Fuchsia. And it kind of almost looks like it's fluorescent. That's because it kind of is. How awesome soft 
one is that. So I'm going to knit, um, she wants a tight fitting towel, so I'm going to knit a towel out of this. And it's actually going to be the type of project that I knit on. And this is from, called Gaston. So this is the tag. Sorry. My computer is over across the room. So it's a little challenging. But I'm very excited. So the button, um, the towel that I picked out also had buttons. And so I have um, also picked these up. These are handmade glass buttons, one of a kind. And this is also made by someone local. The towel together, I think they look pretty good. Um, the two of the yarn, especially behind it, will pick out those like worn deep use of this in the, the button. I think that's going to be awesome. Very excited about that. And then if I'm going to a yarn store to get a specific project, I need to look at what they have because I'm a glutton. She didn't, she didn't know it. And I got these. I've been actually working for these for about a year. What these are is stitch markers is what they're calling them, but they're also a type of safety tag. And what they are, they're up here, but they don't stop the foil as part of the um, mechanism for the safety pin. And so they won't get snagged on your yarn when you're knitting. And so I don't use these as stitch markers as much as I use them for placeholders in my knit. I knit a lot of finer weight um, yarns, and I'll go for a over one or cheaper. They are thicker, and they're made out of that plastic. And what happens with, at least with me, um, when I'm knitting lace, or I'm knitting like a lace sweater, or my day sweater for the day, and I put those in, they tend to have a bolt on the yarn, and it's also just more on my house from the red colors my kids will like to pull them. And so I have tend to tend to have more difficulty. So these are brass and they're super super thin. Let's see if you can see it. Um and they're light. So that's the top part that you can use as a um stitch marker and this is the bottom. So um, these were 18, I believe 18 of these, no 20, for $6. So, um, I probably will only ever need to buy one packet, maybe another packet in a few years. And I'm pretty good with this stuff. I'm not losing all my notions, so very, very excited. I only had two of these before that I actually yanked off the stuff, like, sweaters that I bought before. Um, and ever since I got those two, I've been looking for them every year. Woohoo! local yarn store. And the second thing is just because I wanted one. So I got it. I got a bag, people. Not silent because I know you're going to die. But this is also for the same company with some of the markers. And it's from French. Um, and so what was the essential part of getting high fiber diet? It's just um a nice fit. Um, it's totally neutral. It's got really nice golden handles, and uh, it's just a really great fit for um, for my knitting stuff. So I got that. And now I can start to use it. And I did everything until I show you guys. So if I don't record every week, I have had a week, like two weeks, to use some of this stuff. Telling you. So what else is going on in my life? Or segue to bring it to race. My husband's been gone um, for like ever. It feels like he is gone on a 16 day trip. Um, and it feels like forever. Um, so when he's gone, life is super hectic. I don't get anything done. I basically work, wash my kid, and we have two dogs. And it's just like chaos. Um, so I'm tired, I you don't know, sleep the fastest when he's away. And well, I'm like going through a fog. It's usually, usually he goes away and he's like away for five days and he's there on the weekend and then he goes away again and this time he's gone straight. He's gone for two weekends. And that is just difficult because my daughter is 
um, 25, 6 months. So we're excited. Um, but her favorite word right now is no. Like, do you want to do this? No. Do you want to do that? No. And or we're in the grocery store and she wants everything bad. And I say no. And she just flops down on the floor and starts screaming. I mean, it's not quite that bad, but at the same juncture, I'm just like, I need an hour. I need an hour. Like, run like three errands. And then my life would be amazing. I would get all this stuff done. And usually, my husband provides me that hour, but uh, uh, awesome. He's not here. And the fact that we're just starting to really miss him. Um, but my story this week, as quickly as possible, is that. My husband and I are dorky parents. I know we're going to be the parents that my daughter rolls her eyes at, and is like, one, they're embarrassing, and two, they are from the pre-19s. Super old school, um, you know, like drilling, you respect your elders, and you say twos and cues and all of that stuff. Um, but all of that is going to come to the point of her when she's 15. Right now, we're still pretty cool, which is fine. And so, what we do, we try to do it every weekend at my husband's home. On Friday night, it's dance night. And so, we put on child appropriate, um, non swearing or sexual nature music videos. I am kind of sent one of to my child. And uh, we dance it up. We dance. So, we try to mix it up and not use the same ones that we support. And we only dance for probably 30 minutes. But when I dance around the five year old for 30 minutes and wants to be picked up all the time and carried around, it's like exhausting. It's about all I can do. And so, the best part is, is that my husband's like scrolling through and I don't know, I don't know, I'll go with this one, I'll go with this one. And I'm like, oh gosh, Beyonce, Simple Ladies, put on Simple Ladies. We haven't done that one yet with her. And he's like, really, is that a good video? And I'm like, you have never seen this video? It's like iconic. And he's like, well, I've never watched it yet. Seriously, is that me under a rock? He accuses me of never knowing anything that's going on. This same guy has never watched the Beyonce video? Give me a break. She's been around for like a decade. Where have you been? So, <laughs> we can't. And my daughter loves it. She's like dancing around and she's trying to copy their dance moves and it's so tasty. She's like, Mommy, Mommy, you need to shake your butt. <laughs> but uh, my husband's sitting there and he's just watching this thing and he just doesn't want to dance with me. She is a great dancer. And I'm like, Dude, it's Beyonce. I know. He's like, Dude, she's really good looking. She's like rocking it out. Again, this is Beyonce. Of course she is. Like, that is her thing. About almost the end, we're two and a half or three minutes in or something like that. And I'm dancing with my daughter and kind of ignoring him at this point because his mouth is just kind of open. I think there's rule coming down. Um, and it's like, hey, hey, hey. It makes me like, what? Your video? Did you see how high her heels were? I go, first. It took a mouth off to notice that she was like in five and heels. It's like heels that could show you they're so tall. And he was like, she really is amazing. I've seen more Beyonce videos in my future. <laughs> so who has not seen that video? Come on. Uh, I just thought it was so funny that he was just so amazed. I'm like, he's been around forever. Seriously. Okay. Let's wrap her up. I'm Cassie. This week is um, my Mara doll, which I believe is a Madeline Hunt um, pattern from, from several years ago. I want to say four, but I could be wrong about that. It's actually knit by the three Irish girls. Um, just for not getting yarn love and for in curly base, which is a hundred percent merino worsted. Um, it is a lovely couple of base. This is probably my first base that I ever got um, from an easy dyer that I love. Um, it was kind of one of my first 
entered into really knitting with Indy and has now spiraled me out of control. I'm not all I knit like this bit. But um, it's two skeins um, and I love it. It is it's a wonderful shawl. Um, the only thing that I always wish is that it made it a little bigger. This is a the theme of my early shawls in the state. I always wanted them bigger. Um, but it is very good for work. It does go around nicely. Um, and I don't really want it necessarily to be that much deeper, but I always wish that my tail, the, the width of it is probably, if it was a foot longer, it would be perfect. So, um, but it's that nice ruffle, it lays, lays great. I knew it, it's my self follower. My short little squat self. This is what um, and so that's what we have this week. I love it. It's worn really well. Um, I knit it when that pattern came out. I've had it for several years. But I will tell you that um, I get some of the compliments every single time I wear it. And it's probably one of my more versatile ones um, just for winter itself. And seriously, I've been on my feet today. So I think it's All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Please feel free to come join the Ravelry group and join us at the Sweater Tale. I'm so excited to, you know, talk about what you're knitting and the problems you're having or the yarn you're choosing. I want to hear it all. I want to be nice. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and that it is filled with happiness and you get to knit. So knit with some love and we'll talk.